At that time, Jesus came to a city of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and so Jesus, wearied as he was with his journey, sat down beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself and his sons and his cattle? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. The water that I shall give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and he whom now have is not your husband. This you said truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, and you say that Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will show us all things. Jesus said to her, I who you speak to, you am he. Just then his disciples came. They marveled that he was talking with a woman, but none said, What do you wish? Or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into the city and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me that all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the city and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples besought him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him food? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say, There are yet four months, then come the harvest? I tell you, lift up your eyes and see how fields are already white for harvest. He who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from the city believed in him because of the women's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of your word that we believe, for we have heard ourselves, and we know that this is indeed Christ, the Savior of the world. Glory to you, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Good morning, everyone, and God bless you. I believe that right now, 
In this current day and age, it is the most opportune time for Christianity to spread in the world than any other time over the last 2,000 years. Let me say that again. I believe that right now, in 2022, it is the most opportune and ripe time for Christianity to spread than ever before. And you might say, how can that be? Things are a mess right now. But it's precisely because of that, because things are a mess, that the opportunity for people to actually receive the gospel, for the opportunity for people to actually experience God himself is more ripe than it ever has been before. Think about it for just a moment. We are in more division and disarray globally, nationally, and dare I say also locally, all the way down to that local unit of our own individual households, perhaps more so than ever before. Definitely in our lifetimes, but perhaps more than ever before. It doesn't take a genius or a political scientist to figure that out. You have the globalists, those power-hungry people that are getting ready to meet in Davos again to talk about how to control us more and more. You have political, social climates, economic climates that are seeing greater divisions in our own nation than they ever have before. Fear is being stoked at a greater level, at least in my lifetime, than we've ever experienced before. We even have gotten to the point where families have a difficult time sitting down around a dinner table and discussing anything. It used to be, don't discuss politics or religion outside of the house. Now most people can't even discuss it inside of the house because it's destroying relationships, especially if you have a kid who's in college right now. We've relegated truth to something of a mist that seems to exist somewhere out there, but you can't really grab a hold of it. You can't define it. You don't even know how it works. We've gotten to the point where we've turned truth into such a relative experience that we're now telling people from a very young age that they can go ahead and develop their own truth for anything that they want even down to the most basic things about who they are. I heard a comedian recently say, it wasn't so long ago that when you asked someone, what do you want to be when you grow up, that you were referring to their profession. Nowadays? And it's because we're in this moment right now that I vehemently believe that if society and individuals are presented with an actual expression and experience of God, the true God, the loving God, not the one that we've put all sorts of layers of personal ambition on top of, but the true God. If he's presented to people the natural desire, the natural coveting of every individual in their soul is to be together with God. And if you and I people who call ourselves Christians are simply willing to present that to the people who are around us in their lives. The bar's been set so low, they've been living in such a swamp, we all have been, that naturally we're going to be attracted, we're going to yearn to get there as quickly as possible. Didn't we just hear in the gospel reading Jesus Christ himself say that even though you might think that it's not ready, the harvest It is ripe. The fields are white for harvest. He wasn't speaking about agriculture. He was speaking about people being ready to receive the experience of God in their lives for their own benefit. We're there right now better than ever before. But in order for this to take place, a couple things have to happen. Number one, 
we have to know that what is being presented actually is God, actually is Christianity, actually is the message of the gospel, and not, like what I just said a moment ago, a layered up version of it, That even though we get to pat ourselves on the back and say, I'm being evangelical, I am doing it right, I am teaching people about God, and I've got my own agenda mixed into it as well, too. That doesn't work. That's what's helped get us into this mess in the first place. So many people have been presented with a bastardized impression and experience of who God is. No wonder they've walked away. No wonder they've chosen the swamp of disregard and relativism more so than the life-giving spring. It's gotten so bad. Even just this last week, the Catholic Archbishop of San Francisco, Archbishop Cordleone, a very pious, a very faithful hierarch of the Catholic Church, after years of attempting to reach out to a congresswoman from his area who happens to be the Speaker of the House on issues of morality and the legislation around it, he finally came out and said, for this individual's benefit, they should not receive Holy Communion. And the response has been staggering. The response has been staggering. There's been Catholics, or at least people who claim to be Catholic, coming out all over the nation these last few days saying, well, I'm Catholic and I disagree with you. You're wrong, Archbishop. I'll do whatever I want to do. Remember, truth relegated to a mist. You can just go ahead and do whatever you want. And then there's been other Christian groups who have been out there that have been saying, oh, well, you can come over to us. We'll let you do whatever you want. That's how loving God is. Truth relegated to a mist. And I would love to say that we're exempt, but we're not. On issues of morality, including the issue of abortion that we're speaking about, infanticide, the murder of infants. We even have academics that claim to be from orthodox institutions of study in this nation and beyond who are attempting in philosophical ways to play wordsmith games to try to justify it for their own political means. Remember, academia gets a lot of grant money from governments and special interest groups. We even have orthodox Christians who are putting themselves out there in public view, social media. Remember my advice, cancel it all today. You'll be happier tomorrow. That are out there arguing about how in the world could we ever take away legislation that protects someone's right to kill their child? Claiming to be Orthodox Christians. Sidebar, please repent. It's your soul at risk. And so we have to get to the point where we know that what we are expressing to the society around us, this ripe society, this white field ready for harvest, that what we are expressing actually is true. We have to get back to basics. We have to remove the layers. We have to remove all of the agendas and join ourselves only to the agenda of God which is the salvation of souls. Isn't that what we say? Isn't that what we affirm that we're going to be doing when we say the Lord's Prayer? Thy will be done, your agenda, not mine. We have to strip away the agendas that we've wrapped around God and only present Him truth, love. And it's the one thing that we all need. And as I said, we've been in that dirty swamp for so long that when we see that life-giving water that Jesus referred to himself as in today's gospel, we will all run to be cleansed. So the first thing that we need to do 
to take advantage of the white fields of opportunity is that we have to make sure that we keep it basic, simple, and true. The second thing that we need to do is we have to start local. There's not a need for each and every one of us right now to go out and sign up for a podcast so that we can tell the whole world. Oftentimes those types of efforts are a cover-up for the fact that we're uncomfortable or not willing to start off in our own households. It's a lot easier to give a lecture online and put it out there for 12 people to listen to than it is to speak to the people in your own home. Or dare I say, the neighbor that lives on the other side of the fence. Let's start local. Isn't that what the Apostle Paul did? Isn't that what the Apostle Peter did? They went to local communities and connected with the local people. And for you and for me, the most localized community that we have is our family. Let's begin there. It would be idealistic and wonderful to claim that all of our families are all solid and they're all filled with practicing Orthodox Christians. But we know that's not the truth. We're broken just like every other person in the world is. Our family units have challenges and brokenness just like every other family unit does. And that's the place where we first need to become ambassadors of the light of Jesus Christ. That's the place where we first have to be unapologetic about the reality that there is empirical truth, Jesus Christ. And we don't get to define him in our terms. It's in our local households. It's in that first community, that first society, that we need to be offering the love of Jesus Christ to one another with more purpose than anywhere else. And if you and I are willing to do that at home, then there's a shot at maybe being able to do it outside of the house later. But if you can't do it at home first, there's no shot anywhere else. The fields are ripe. The world wants to heal. Society wants to get better. But we don't know where to look because we've hid God away for so long. We're not going to find it in Davos. You're not going to find it in D.C. You won't find it on a college campus. But you will find it in Jesus Christ. Let's make the commitment today, every single one of us as individual Christians, to be strengthened by the body and blood of Jesus Christ in this divine liturgy and go home with the commitment to keep it basic, keep it true, and start at home. To God be the glory, and to us, apostleship in his vineyard. Christos Anesti. Christ is risen. Truly is risen. Christos Anesti. Christ is risen. There's something about babies that anyone who's ever had one or anyone who's ever been around babies knows there's something very special and very pure about them. It's especially wonderful when they're yours, but then after you've gotten through your baby phase, it's great to have someone else's that you give back before it's diaper time as well, too, as well. There's something very pure about these kids. And so this is the reason why God dating all the way back to the Jewish temple and then maintained throughout Christianity has not only an acceptance but even a full-blown service where we welcome the child into the community which is what we just did today. How beautiful of a thing that it is that the church engages us all the way from those first moments. It's important for the church to continue engaging us at every different stage of our lives. At some stages, the church does a good job. At other stages, we haven't done such a great job, but we're trying. And one demographic, one age group, 
that we're trying and we're beginning to reach out to now are our young adults. I'm very, very pleased that we're having more take place for our young adults here at St. Basil's and in our region. This coming up Saturday, we will have a young adult gathering here at the church, beginning with a little church service, a little Vesper service, and then afterwards some fellowship. I ask if anyone who's interested, please find Evan Diamantaris, who's in church today, who can fill in details for this gathering on Saturday. Very important for us to be reaching out to all of our demographics and bringing them to Christ, or at least creating the opportunity for them to come to Christ. At that gathering also will be a new young adult introduced to our community when she arrives this week. We have a intern that's going to be with us. She'll be with us for a couple of months during the beginning of this summer. Ms. Constantina or Dina Brown will be with us. Uh, she is completing her Archdiocesan program of certification to be a licensed youth worker youth ministry worker in our archdiocese. As a part of that, they embark upon an internship somewhere in the life of the church, and she will be doing her internship with us here at St. Basil's. So I know that over the next couple of months that when you see her inside of the church, you will welcome her with open arms and let her know how much that we appreciate her being here, her continued pilgrimage to learn how to serve within Christ's church and how we are going to be a part of that that nurturing, but also a beneficiary of her work. I pray that the good Lord continues to inspire us and continues to lead us always in his light and in his love. Please come forward at this time to receive undivinum from Father Dimitri and go about your day in peace. God be with us all.